Have you ever checked the weather app on your phone and noticed the pollen count? Maybe you're one of the 4.5 million Australians that suffer from hay fever and use the pollen count to manage your allergies by taking antihistamines or staying indoors. But have you ever wondered who actually counts the pollen and how they arrive at the number you see? Well, actually, it's this guy. This is Associate Professor Ed Newbigin of the School of Biosciences at the University of Melbourne. He's been running the Melbourne Pollen Count for 20 years. But how do you actually measure pollen? Well, Ed uses this thing. It's called a Burkhart spore trap. This one is 30 years old and lives on top of a tall building at the University of Melbourne. The machine is switched on from the 1st of October right through to the end of December every year. It basically works like a little vacuum cleaner that sucks in air through a small nozzle at a rate of 10 litres per minute. That's the same amount a human breathes. Inside the machine is a glass microscope slide covered with a sticky substance. The slide moves slowly across the nozzle over a 24 hour period. Every morning at 9 a.m. the slide is collected and brought back to the lab to be counted. It is then stained to help visualise the particles underneath the microscope and then Ed gets to work by physically counting the individual pollen grains on each slide. The slide is counted for the number of grass pollen grains and the total number of pollen grains. The raw count is converted to a value for the average number of pollen grains per cubic metre of air for the preceding 24 hour period. All these numbers are translated into the rating that we see on the Melbourne Pollen Count app and web page. Low, moderate, high or extreme. And that's how we get our pollen count. But it's not just about avoiding being itchy and sneezy. There are currently eight pollen count sites across the state of Victoria and their role has become even more significant since Melbourne experienced a severe thunderstorm asthma event in November of 2016. That night, 10 people lost their lives and hospitals and emergency services were overwhelmed with calls for help. Thunderstorm asthma is thought to be triggered by the combination of a storm front and high levels of grass pollen. Grass pollen is ordinarily too big to be inhaled, but it is thought to be broken up into smaller, mist-like particles when it is picked up and blown long distances in the winds of a storm front. These particles, now small enough to be inhaled deep into the lungs, can trigger asthma symptoms, even in people who don't usually suffer from asthma. The team at Melbourne Pollen Count provide vital information to the severe weather forecasters at the Bureau of Meteorology. It is their job to send out warnings to all Victorians when they detect the conditions that could lead to another thunderstorm asthma event. It's safe to say Ed and the team could save your life. So I think it's time to go ahead and download the Melbourne Pollen Count app.